So we're at the uh, Eucalyptus Village in Cherokee, North Carolina. And you'll see some video after this of our tour guide for part of the village. We're on the self-guided piece now. Brought the Garen kids. Boy, we're having so much fun. This is really a beautiful place and the history is just absolutely spectacular. So I hope you enjoy some of the video and the still pictures that I've got after this. And, uh, thread from the braided fibers of the Indian hemp plant, also known as milkweed. Braided those together and our belts would have looked similar to this. Another item we used was hair from the mountain bison. We did have bison in this area until the late 1700s when they were killed out during the fur trade. They weren't as large as plains bison, about the same size as a dairy cow now. There are two different types of beadwork. First type is a scroll work. This was used to decorate our clothing. It would have been sewn down the side of the men's pants and along the border of the ladies' skirts. The second type is the solid work. <clears throat> now to do this, go pick up one bead at a time, sew it to the next bead. This allows the thread to pass through each bead twice. She uses two different methods. The first is a ball method where she'll shape the clay into a ball, press her thumb into the center, build up the sides to the desired height and shape. The second is the coil method where she'll make a flat disc of clay, lay her coils on top of each other until she gets the desired height for her pot. And this method was used in making larger vessels for cooking or dry storage. Once she has the shape for her pottery, she'll use different tools like a piece of river cane or a seashell Scrape the inside and outside of the pot to give it an even consistency. Now before the introduction of metal knives and modern materials, we made our masks from different items in this area like tree bark or gourds that we grew in our gardens. The gourds are not edible, but we used them for many different purposes. <clears throat> we didn't waste anything, so the back of the gourd that was cut off was used for a bowl or storage. After the introduction of metal, our masks became more intricate like you see here, and the use of these in our dances and ceremonies is explained more to you on our Square Grounds lecture. Now this is an example of our gardening tools before the introduction of metal. It has a rhododendron handle like you see growing along the path here in our village today with a natural curve to it so it was easier to connect the flint. But they'll take this cane, cut it in half, quarters or eighths, depending on how wide they need their splits to be. Take their knife again, peel out these inner fibers, and leave the outside because it's already naturally smooth and shiny. Now once they have their splits cut, they'll use different roots and barks from this area for color. For yellow, they would use yellow root. For orange, bloodroot. For light brown, walnut bark. And for dark brown or black, butternut bark. Now he's making arrowheads. Our arrowheads are made from two different materials. The first was flint. This was found in different parts of West Virginia and Kentucky. We were the largest Native American tribe in North America before the removal. We covered over eight southeastern states, all the way from the Virginias down into the top of Florida. So this was more of a village to village trade item. Now the second is obsidian. <clears throat> this is volcanic glass. This was a trade item from South American tribes. We like to go down, see what they have we need, we have they need, make new friends. They've been known to find pieces of our pottery all the way down into Guatemala. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Yay. So let's go into the sweat lodge and no fire, no sweating today. The one woman and I will represent him and what is best for this village. We wish for you to be here to offer any insight you may have into these strangers. Well, I'm not sure how much good I'll be, but I'm certainly willing to listen and offer anything I can. That's how we can ask it. Seems we'll not be waiting long. The captain of this militia, in order to speak for you. I will speak for myself. Captain Duncan Rook, I demand to speak to the headsman of this town. I am Waya, war chief of this village. This is an Igati, the war warrior. Why have you come to our home? A war chief, is it? I know you people have men who speak of peace. Bring them to me. You will speak to us, and we will speak for our peace chief. Why is this a squall 
<laughs> Seems like she thinks she has a place in this business. You will show her the proper respect when you will leave this building. Oh, yapping mouth is a new interest to us. But don't listen. More as likely she won't understand Hi. anyway. We business to discuss. We come to collect on debts owed to the citizens of His Majesty's province of North Carolina. We owe nothing to the citizens of any land claimed by the white. And if this is what you've come here for, you had best leave. There's nothing here for you. You Cherokee have much to answer for because of your war. Farmers and laborers have found themselves without their needs met. Ah! <laughs> 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 